Good morning everybody, it's Max from My Kind of Beats. I hope you're doing all right. Now today we are in Angeles in the Pampangan province. Now this province is known as being one of the most delicious provinces throughout all the Philippines. I'm talking over 7,000 islands and this is the spot you come to eat. I cannot wait to explore the iconic foods and just taste everything and see how delicious it truly is. I'm excited to get to bring you along with me. Let's get it started. Couldn't think of anywhere else to start this trip off other than Aling, Lusing, Sisig. Now they're barely getting open, but their Sisig is ready to go. Man, you can really feel it when you come here. You see all the posters and awards they've won from years and years and years. You see the Anthony Bourdain quotes, and you can just see the excellence they've been doing for Sisig years and years and years. Oh, now that is a beautiful sound, that sizzling. It's sizzling and bubbling so much. I had grease splatter up and get on my lens. I mean, the fragrance coming from this is just unreal. I mean, you get the sound, you get the smell. I mean, this is just what makes your mouth water before you even take a bite. Definitely not gonna waste any time and dig in. Oh, and look at this, the char at the bottom is absolutely gorgeous. Gonna get this with some rice. It's gonna season just a little bit with this little mixture of sauce I got here. Give me a nice uniform vibe. That is what your sisig dreams are made of. I mean, it's creamy from the chicken livers. You get the nice pork flavor for some of the flavorful cuts of pork. You get the chewiness from my pieces like baked ears. So there's so much texture going on. You get that char on it. So you get that high heat, the crunchiness little bottoms you can little scrape up. And then you get the sourness from like a fruity calamansi sourness. Got the little red onion in there. Oh my. Mm. believe how well this is seasoned. I mean, I'm just adding just a touch. I have a little vinegar and raw onion, a little sauce on the top. But other than that, I mean, there's nothing else that I would want. Mm. You know how we do it though, it's time to get it started. This has to be one of the most fun pork meals I've ever eaten. I mean, it's greasy and charred from the bottom, the hot heat skillet cast iron. You get the creaminess from like the chicken livers. You get the meaty pieces of pork for the flavor. You get some of the cartilage parts for the chew. And then you get that sauce on it. It's nice and sour. You get a chili, it's got spice. Cool. Mm. I'm telling you, the kicker and what really saves this meal from being too much is the Filipino dot, their love for sour. The calamansi, the sourness, really pulls back on the greasiness, cuts through it, and helps balance it out. Mm. Mm. I feel like I just had like this pork spiritual awakening. You know when you have something happen, you're just kind of awestruck? I mean, that's how I feel after eating that dish. I'm just so dumbfounded on how delicious and how good that was. I mean, I've been enlightened into the sasig world and it is just a beautiful thing. Or I could just be in a food coma from eating all that sasig. I don't know. All right, we're at the next restaurant. We're at Taldawa Camping Gong, which are doing two very signature Filipino dishes, a sinagong, which is a very sour soup, and then of course adobo. But they're doing them with protein sources that I don't think I'm gonna get many opportunities to try. They're doing the sinagong actually with goat, and then they're doing a duck adobo. What's cool about this place, it's almost like you're walking into their backyard. You can kind of see it. It's very open space, just got a little rooftop. So compared to the city, there's so much trees and greenery in this little little backyard almost. It's so much cooler. It feels so nice. It feels like you're dining more kind of in nature than you are still in the city. Yeah. <laughs> 
They're pressure cooking all these meats. It just got me thinking about how tender they're gonna be. Plus all these spices and flavors I can smell. It's just got my mouth watering like crazy. Oh, she's doing some prep for the adobo. She threw a ton of garlic, onions, and peppers in there. And that oil, and it's boom. I mean, it hits your face. Explosion of fragrance coming from that hot, hot wok. <laughs> <laughs> My dear boy, brother. Now you see her, she's got the goat that's been pressure cooked and steamed to an absolute tender. She's taking it and she's putting it into the Senegal sour based soup. And these ladies are so much tougher than me. They're back here working like it's nothing. And I'm back here just watching and I'm dripping in sweat, just hanging out as close as I can get to the fan. <laughs> Filipino feast here. I'm feeling like I'm back at home. I got the saw in the background. Somebody cutting down some trees. I'm telling y'all, I'd much rather dine on this Filipino feast than I would cutting me some firewood. And look at this. If this isn't just a mother, grandmother, you're part of the family serving a rice. This is humongous. Wow. I'm having trouble deciding what to start with. I think I'm just gonna start with what's closest to me, the duck adobo. Oh yeah, just give me some of this duck. Give me some of these chilies right here and get it right on this rice. Some of the juices down here. I'm just gonna go for a massive bite here. Give me a little bit of the duck and then that rice. Mm. Mm. All that pressure cooked duck meat, it's nice and it's just a little bit chewy, but as you chew it, it just becomes creamy. It's that darker meat, full of flavor. It's absorbed all the things they were cooking in. You get like a little bit of ginger, a little bit of spiciness. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. You get the peppers and the garlic. You get a little bit of acid, saltiness from the soy sauce. I mean, it's just well cooked up with a lot of flavors wrapped into it. Oh. All right, next up I wanna try the goat caldereta. It's been that goat, it's been pressure cooked till tender. Throw in a potato, carrot, and tomato, a little mixture, cooked down until it gets a nice little thickness and oiliness in this sauce. Oh. Oh, that leaves a nice coating of sauce just on your mouth. You can feel it like on your lips, all over your mouth. Got a great kick of spice to it, <laughs> or it may have been that chili, but that goat, again, cooking it so tender. I mean, you gotta chew a little bit, but I'm telling you, it falls apart. As you chew it, you get just a, the down-home feeling of having potatoes and carrots cooked down until they're sweet. And then that sauce is so oily, you just coat your mouth. Oh yeah, add my last little chili half to this bite and go back in for another one. Mm. The way it's tomato rich heavy with the oil it just sticks to you. It's got this fruitiness to it, this sweetness. I said you get the meatiness, you get the potatoes and carrots, for the sweetness and just like that down home cooked meal feeling. All right, last thing we got is one of my favorites, a Senegong, a Filipino sour soup, and they're cooking it with a goat here. And as I'm just transporting that goat, it's just falling apart. I mean, you just can't even keep it together. It's just shredding already and falling to pieces. Mm. 
Mm. Oh, it's so sour. It just makes me pucker, makes my mouth water, and then you get that goat. It's so meaty, so rich. That time fatty, I had a huge chunk of fat piece, and this goat here is so much softer and fall apart tender than the one in the Calderetta. It's so much more soft and tender than the adobo duck. This one, I'm guessing because it's in the acid for so long, this is truly fall apart tender in your mouth. The other ones are soft, they still got a little chew to them, but this has no chew to it at all. I mean, this is just melting in my mouth as I eat it. Mm. All it needs is just a little bit of heat. Mm. Thank you so much for the amazing meals. It was incredible. I ate way too much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, y'all doing some incredible meals here. Got to get here and try those three. Now, the synagogue may be my favorite, but they all three were fantastic. All right, next place I want to go is kind of further off. It's all the way into Clark, so I popped in a grab. We're going to head that way and get there. All right, guys, we got Angelito here. He's my grab driver. He said his sons watch a lot of YouTube, so you want to give a shout out to him? Yeah. Hi, John Michael Viano. I'm your father. <laughs> Hello. Oh, that's funny. All right, man, thanks for the ride. All right, guys, let's get in here and eat. Okay, so how I found out about this place is just from a friend, and apparently what I love about this place is not only the rustic feel you get to it, but everybody that works here is family, so that's pretty cool to me. I guess the reason I love it so much is because it just reminds me a little bit of my home. Maybe not as colorful, but just the amount of antiques, the amount of antique furniture, and the little decorations really reminds me a lot of kind of what I grew up in. All right, y'all, I'm finally getting to try a dish I wanted to try for so long, the Pindang Damulag. Now, that's terrible pronunciation, but what it is is the caribou, or the domestic water buffalo of the Philippines, and then it is just kind of almost like fermented and cured in a sugar and vinegar mixture. Oh, I didn't realize this till I pushed his rice down and I got a huge whiff of just fried garlic. Give me a little bit of egg, a little bit of this fried garlic on the rice, and then get a beautiful piece of this caribou. Look how sauced up and sticky this is. Just laid on top for a massive first bite. Oh, mm. oh my gosh, that caribou meat, like it is, tender and fall apart, but it's dried out a little bit like a jerky. That is a crazy texture right there because you think it's gonna be kind of hard like a beef jerky. It's got that little bit of dryness, but it's just fall apart. And then the flavor, I mean, it first hits you with a bunch of sugar, like a rock sugar, but then it just turns completely sour. Takes over every other flavor you eat that with. You need the rice, you need the eggs to pull back because that is strong. Oh yeah, I'm loving these flavors right there. The garlic with the rice, that little bit of egg yolk, and then just that water buffalo. Oh my gosh, that's a trio. Mm, mm. So sugary, so sour. And then you gotta have that egg, gotta have that egg yolk. Makes it even creamier, but helps balance the flavor. That could easily be too much. You've gotta have some other components with it to pull back. All right, y'all, so last place I've had my fill for food. It is time to get something sweet. Place you've gotta go, hands down, Susie's Cuisine. And you can see in here, it's already packed. I'm about to weave my way in here and grab some little sweet treats. All right, so I ordered some sweets, got some coffee, just brought it back to my hostel, relax outside. It's a beautiful weather day. It was crowded in there anyway, so I'm excited to get here. Just have some peace and quiet while I have these sweets. Oh yeah, look at all the sweets I got right here. Look how gorgeous that is. That just looks gooey and gooey. Oh, 
oh, that is just almost hard to eat because it's so creamy, so stick to your mouth. Got a great sugar pop that comes into it right after you get that savory creaminess. It just coats your mouth. Oh yeah, that's fantastic. I mean, I barely can hold on to this. There's juices just dripping and running everywhere from that caramel. Oh, mm. oh just a fantastic leche flan. And it's not even what they're known for. Oh, creaminess level on that was out of this world. Ooh, you gotta have some coffee or something with that. Mmm. Ooh, yeah. All right, I think what I wanna try next is the, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, the Sapin Sapin. Oh, I'm looking at it. look how gorgeous it is. The tri-colors here, got like the white topping, then the yellow, and then the purple. Mm. Oh. oh, this is more like a rice, low glutinous dumpling, but then it's got a intense coconut flavor on the top. You almost get some of the coconut meat as well, as it's got that little bite and chew of coconut meat, but then it's got the ooey gooey texture of a rice dumpling. And then there's like a third thing, the yellow part, I don't know if it's almost like a little sugary custardy as well. So you've got the rice glutinous layer, which is the purple, the little custardy sugary layer, which is yellow, and then like the young coconut meaty flavored topping. Oh wow, a lot's going on in there. I did not expect that. All right, I'm gonna save the tipok for last. I'm gonna go with the karame ube. All right, I'm going hands in for this one because I know this one is an actual rice dumpling. See, so yeah, I can kind of hold it, have no problem. It's like the bottom layer of that three colored one, but it is, it's just like a rice dumpling with a little bit of a coconut flavor. Not my favorite at all. It's actually the least sugariest of this one. So if you like more of the chewy rice dumpling texture and less sugar, that's more for you. Not really my favorite. All right, ready to get my last one, the Tibok Tibok. Would you see it? This is actually a caribou milk pudding. And then they give you, well, they gave me a lot of topping, which you can get on here. I'm just gonna pour a little bit. Oh yeah, it's like pudding texture. Look at that. That is as like pudding-like at first, but it's got a little more creaminess, custard-like as well. It's not as gelatinous as I would say like a pudding is. It's got a little more of a creaminess to it and that topping to it. It's almost like a caramelized, burnt, little glutinous, sticky rice. Gives you a nice little flavor. Got a little caramelized component to it as well, which is great because actual caribou milk pudding is actually very light. And then you get the topping. That's where the intense flavor comes from. Hmm. All right, y'all, I'm gonna get out of here. But before I do, I just wanna say sorry from the bottom of my heart to the Filipino people, especially from the Pampanga province. I just did a terrible job pronouncing that at the beginning of the video. And I really butchered a lot of the, the food's names today. So I just wanna say sorry. Hope you can forgive me. You know I love y'all and I'm gonna get better at it. I cannot wait to see y'all at the next video. So Max and my kind of beats. I'll see you later.